often fail to understand. And the same incredible terror that's menacing me will strike at you! Hey guys, and welcome back to uh, uh, being inf informed about that menacing terror that's uh, uh, going to strike you if you don't understand. So listen, today we're going to do a very special episode regarding the, uh, the David Miscavige secret layer at Scientology Media Productions. I'm going to bring on my very good friend, cinematographer Rachel Hastings. Say hello, Rachel. Hey, hello, Rachel. Hey, good. Very good, Rachel. <laughs> Um, so uh, those of you who may not know Rachel, she is an ex uh, Sea Org member who left a few years ago. She and I worked together for years. We've been old friends. We're old friends for years. And um, uh, she basically, here's a picture of her in Taiwan shooting a propaganda video for the church. Uh, many of you may have seen her recently. She's been on with Aaron Smith Levin. She initially did a video with Mike and Leah, and we did one before. But we want to talk about our mutual experience um, at uh, uh, working together for gold and Scientology media productions. Rachel, do you want to add anything to that? Like, I mean, in terms of who I am? Well, in terms of who, who you are or our shared experience. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I <clears throat> I met Mitch pretty within my first year of working um, with uh, the different... Um, I worked a lot with the different groups, the nonprofit groups and such, and front groups and things. Um, and I met Mitch, and Mitch was awesome, um, always super kind and very. Wait, where's my wallet? Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> I want my two dollars. Yeah, Mitch. right. I want my two dollars. Um, <clears throat> he always, you know, knew was really professional, and um, you know, uh, had a. We all really looked up to Mitch and respected Mitch and his opinion artistically. Um, and technically on things having to do with films or videos, his opinion was one of the most important ones. And he always, I always knew if something was wacky and someone had a weird idea about something, Mitch was like, I was like, we'll talk to Mitch because Mitch, he knows his stuff, camera and lighting and film yeah. history wise. And, um, you know, so uh, I always just wanted to, I was honestly there trying to get to work with Mitch. That was like one of my big goals. Like, well, we're going to get through all this, whatever we're doing, waiting around. Um, and we're going to end, I'm going to end up working with Mitch and I'm going to be, you know, shooting for Mitch. And it didn't uh, really work out that way. Um, we got to work together a little bit and, you know, here and there I would pop in on his shoots, but um here we are now. Uh, maybe we'll get to work on something again in the future. I have a feeling we will. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for that, Rachel. Finally, I found somebody to come on YouTube. And, and <clears throat> believe me, you embarrassed me by saying that, but I really cared about all the staff. <laughs> One of the reasons that I stayed so long was because of people like Rachel. And I know on my end at Gold, mm. uh, Rachel was always the person I was trying to get up to Gold to be like an <laughs> apprentice and learn to direct and, you know, so... We have this long relationship. One of the things, um, at the time when you joined the Sea Org and became a Gold staff member and I was working for Gold, people should understand that Gold at that time was the undisputed mm -hmm. center of power for all of Scientology management. Uh, you know, not just the production facility and the audio facility and the manufacturing facility, but you had international management. And so, and you know, you talked about, I heard you the other day talking about like the clout that you had as a gold staff member when you would travel to different places in the world and how the staff at the org would have to treat you and call you sir mm -hmm. and show all this difference. And that seat of power, you know, Miscavige, he left gold 2013, maybe 2014 latest. And he moved that seat. He got rid of all of international management. They're gone. They're not waiting up in the wings to come back. They're completely dismissed. They're either gone, they've passed away, or they've had their claws removed and their fangs removed. And you know, they they're like they're like those guys in the Hunger Games. You know, they all have those those electronic uh, neck things. And Miscavige has a button, and he can push it anytime and just blow their head off, like not literally, but you know what I mean. And he moved that all mm -hmm. down to Scientology Media Productions, and he mm -hmm. runs the whole thing like an oligarchy, wouldn't you say? Rachel, it's like an oligarchy. Like he's like the Putin, and then he's given each of these different 
domains like book publishing, manufacturing, you know, the, the, comp the compilation of all the materials. He's given those each to like an mm -hmm. oligarch and then he controls them. Like the fiefdoms? Yeah, the little <laughs> fiefdoms. You know, I heard somebody say the other day that those people hmm. running those things are like his um, his homies, but they're not. They're not his homies. He uh, he doesn't hang out with them. So, if anybody's unfamiliar with the location of Scientology Media Productions, unlike Gold, which is now just a backwater production facility in the middle of nowhere, it still performs an important function, but it's no longer anywhere near as significant of the seat of power. But Scientology Media Productions is right right in the heart of West of East Hollywood. As a matter of fact, a, mm -hmm. a month or two ago, you sent me a photo. Let me bring this up. I like it's you. On the, and it's on the borderline of the Gaberhood, as we said. Yeah, the Gaberhood. The, yeah, the, the East, East Hollywood, East, Silver Lake. East side, yeah, East Side Queers, you know? Yeah, so one night, Rachel sent me this photo. Uh, mm -hmm. Why don't you go ahead and explain this photo? I, well, I was at a I was at a queer event at a gay bar, and uh, it happened to be <laughs> we went out out for a break. It was a a, a show with uh, all kinds of performance art and music and um, drag performance and all kinds of stuff. <clears throat> all of which I would have any one single thing I would have definitely been sent to ethics for attending before. Despite it, it was a 21 and over event where you were ID'd at the door, you know. Um, right. So, yeah, and it was very loud and fun and full of <clears throat> love and support and things. And everyone was, you know, on a, on a break at the intermission and jumping around in the street. And I, uh, I, <laughs> I took this picture and I sent it to Mitch. I was like, my God, we're super loud. We're here and we're queer. And the lights in dave's office are on like i think he's hearing us be so gay and it i know right, it probably right. drives them nuts like i know that when <clears throat> smp was there um the different individuals involved were really angry that there's a bar connected to their property which is this historic tiki bar and oh yeah that, that a, by the way i just have to add the tiki bar yeah. is a really <laughs> famous la bar it's been owned by the same family for like 80 years. It's it's mm -hmm. only open like four days a week. And the old television station, KZT, mm -hmm. who Scientology purchased this property from, they did a very special featured article on the Tiki Bar. So, you know, they celebrated the Tiki Bar, but SMP was really like embarrassed that they were next connected to this bar. They're really mad about it. And, the, and it's a small tiki dive bar that's a part of hollywood history yeah but it's and they don't have like a bathroom yeah exactly. they don't have a bathroom so yeah. people come out drinking these fabulous after drinking these fabulous huge blue hawaiian yeah. drinks and then they pee on s p yeah <laughs> no well that's yeah <laughs> yeah so scientology anyway, media pee here yeah i mean the thing is they moved into a really cool part of hollywood like east mm -hmm. hollywood when they moved in that was the new cool spot, you know, Silver it's Lake, Echo Park. Cool. Yeah, it's very queer friendly. It's yeah. very, movie, very movie history. Just down the street is El Cid, which is a flamenco restaurant right. um, with flamenco dancing and food. And that was the original studio of D.W. Griffith, who, if you're into film history, right um he he wasn't the greatest guy and he his his films were politically not very good but it is a piece of uh the, yeah the, but it's a piece of film history yeah that, that that's right there so it's right in this um corridor uh, it's really like in this cool cor corridor yeah yeah and and uh, speaking of El Cid, laura fm a famous ex uh a uh, Sierra member child, the, the second generation who grew up at the ranch. Mm. She recently did a gig there. So it's, and also we shot some Dianetics films in their club. So, yeah, but it's it really, I mean, I, the, the couple of years I spent at SMP, mm. I really enjoyed it. One of the reasons I enjoyed it. Mm. Well, I didn't enjoy all of it, but one of the enjoyable things about it was that it was in East Hollywood. Mm. It was like in the Glendale Echo Park area. So yeah, that was very cool. But there, there we, there it is. There's a, from the doorway of a gay bar. You can see Rachel has circled uh, mm -hmm. David Miscavige's office, and uh, so anyway, I thought you'd appreciate that. Um, and no one came to the to the drag show. I, I was sure if they're working late, somebody would come on by. Yeah, from SMP. 
and pop into the gay bar because they're yeah at least there's no problem with being gay there's no problem it's completely fine we yeah love that's right the and all, yeah and also there's I, no I, problem no one came I don't know. yeah I know it's amazing you would think that they'd be embracing um, mm. the culture in their neighborhood but they're I'm not. waiting for the I'm waiting for the the way to happiness float in in pride this year. I yeah, think it's gonna and, happen. Yeah, and the you know the other thing that I think is significant to mention is that in the gay bar there was no problem being mm -hmm. straight. So no, <laughs> yeah, they no. wouldn't have had a problem if they came over. So no. And it, so okay, moving on. The last time we were on, we talked about your work traveling around the world, shooting propaganda videos, mm -hmm. and about the statistics that were then gathered in 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 relation to those videos. And then those statistics were even turned into further videos. And when I was looking at the S&P video, which we're gonna, we're, we're gonna review today, I came across one of the promos. And I wanna bring it up here because I don't think our audience has any idea. Let me see, how do I do this? I don't think they have any idea of how ridiculous. So I'm gonna play this thing. Uh, I have no idea what the audio is. And I want you to, okay. Are we seeing this, folks? Are you seeing? Yeah, we're seeing this. I here. can see it. Okay, great. I have to juggle two windows here. Let me let me just turn the audio down so we can talk over it. Oh, it's not going to let me do that. Um, yeah, here I can do it like this. Okay, so the first statistics you're seeing here these are actual, real, you know, planet Earth statistics. I can pause this anytime you want. Okay, so now let me just actually, I'm going to stop it right now. Okay, well, so that's, that's like, I mean, I think also we can talk about their format uh, because it right. can be pretty offensive. There's a set, there's a format that's followed for any video that gets done for right. any event. And the first thing you have to do is start with what they call the ruin. Right, and this exactly. is for like planet Earth, whatever. But we would go into a country and they would have all these statistics and they would want to show the ruin. But sometimes that, that, like this stuff, those, that's the ruin. So cr crime statistics and illegal drugs and things like that. Right. The literacy. The, yeah. The issue the issue there is <clears throat> that it can be quite exploitive and it can be quite racist. Um, and, uh, even xenophobic because they'll pull up a city and the first thing they're going in about it is like crime and crime ridden streets. And they're throwing out all these statistics, and drug, drug addicts and this and that. And then they'd use these, they'd want these shots of, you know, things that might represent it or, you know, poverty, people don't have money, you know, things like that. And, <clears throat> That is a really fine line uh, to cross when you're when you're telling a story and it should be told responsibly and it's yeah. it's really exploitive yeah. and it's really like and then usually followed by a walking shot of a white savior coming from America <laughs> in okay. literally walking to yeah. save these poor people. And right. it's just anyway, it, this right. is so, th that's not exactly here. This is for all of planet Earth, but well, it's also the way that people are recruited into Scientology. The first thing you do is you find their ruin. So the idea is you always shove people into the worst possible scenario and then say, we have the solution, which is what they're now they're going to start talking about. They're saying they're supporting a worldwide network. Now, this would be all of their front groups right here. Narcanon, uh, what is it? what is that? The way to happy? No, that's the way to happiness. That's Plus. um, drug, Narcanon. On the yeah, bottom, yeah, that's uh, dr Foundation for a Drug Free World. Right. Criminon International, Applied Scholastics, The Way to Happiness, Volunteer Ministers, Citizens Commission on Human Rights, and um, uh, not Youth for Human Rights, but um, United for Human Rights. Right. Right. Okay. So now this is now. Look at these statistics. You're going to start staring. Okay, so the church claims they have 1.7 million volunteers worldwide working for these different organizations. I I, poof, I can't even begin to describe to you what a lie that is. Well, that's, that happens. That's calculated in a way that like, so let's say volunteer ministers go and show up after at a, after a fire and they say, hey, can we 
uh, volunteer in our yellow t-shirts or not um, at this Red Cross station. And they'll volunteer with people and they might give out some some booklets from the... Right. Oh, you froze. Just give her a minute. She'll be back. We've lost her internet. Yeah. So anyway, that's we're gonna. I'm gonna move on to the next. Uh, next. I'm gonna just move on here. Okay. So now we're running through these different professions that supposedly these organizations connect to teachers, which is factually not true because they've been kicked out of schools for trying to secretly practice religion. Hold on, I'm getting a call from, hey, oh, you're back. No, that was me. Did you just lose me? Yeah, yeah, but you're back. You're back. Oh, I wonder what happened. I don't know. I, you know, it, it, it could it could be OSA. I mean, I, I've changed my passwords and everything, but they definitely, like, they've been, like, they used to hang out here when we were, when I was working for them, so who knows. Okay, but let's move on. So now we're looking at the fact that supposedly these organizations are connected to teachers, clergy, law enforcement, military, blah, 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 a bunch of bullshit. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to, uh, embarrassingly, I wrote all of this text. I didn't make up the statistics. Like how hard was this? I think I did it in the shower one morning. Okay. This is changing the lives of over a billion people. So what they're claiming is a seventh of the population of earth is positively helped by Scientology in 119 nations. Oh, no, sorry, 196 nations. Eradicating drug abuse. Okay, I can't watch this. Okay. Uh, 23 million. Now, how do they justify this, Rachel? 23 million told the truth about drugs? I don't even think the dissemination center where they print this stuff is capable of printing 23 million booklets in a year. I think we lost you again. Your your internet went, it keeps going belly up. Okay, well, we're just going to continue on here. I think maybe Rachel's being attacked. Let me just give her a call real quick. Please please hang on, guys. Are you back? Okay, you're back. I think my you, internet to my to something else. I just switched to a different internet connection. Okay, good. Usually what I try to do, sometimes I forget. Before <laughs> I go on, I always reboot my router. But just for the heck of it, okay, twenty three, oh huh? You know what a router is? Yeah. Yeah, I might have to come no, over. No, it's. And I don't think it's. I don't think there's anything wrong with my my internet connection works great all the time. So. Okay. Cool. Uh, it's not that yeah. I have bad internet. It's something else. Yeah, but sometimes sometimes your router gets choked up. It happens to me. I may have to come over there and reboot your router. Okay. So. It's not. Yeah. Uh, I I I, okay. I can reboot it. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I'm joking. I'm, it's a joke. Okay, come on. How do they justify 23 million truth about drugs? How do, okay, you so you've got um, so you've got a vol a volunteer minister or a staff member throws in a yellow t-shirt, shows up and helps with Red Cross, and then maybe gives out some booklets. So now they can say they're working with the Red Cross. So that one volunteer minister, they can find out Red Cross sent out, you know, uh, eight thousand volunteers so they can count them all because the purpose of these, what they call fourth, fourth dynamic campaign groups is right. to work with non Scientology groups and partner with them. So now they're calling them volunteer minister volunteers. Right. So it's kind of like an STD, you know, they say if you have sex with one person, you have sex with 10,000 people. Yeah. Right. It's kind of like, so they spread Scientology. This They assume it spreads like an STD. That, that's my it's I can tell you, I, I went in every country, um, uh, not every country, but like so many countries on every con continent that we're active in, which was all, all except for Antarctica. And I never was able to pull together a thousand volunteers at one time, even hundreds right. of volunteers at right. one time for any of these right. campaigns. It would, it would be... Right. We were like having a really great day. It would be like amazing if we got 15 or 20 people together. Like that's okay. That's so, okay. And that would take a lot of work. So, right, right. So now check this out. They used to, if you remember, they used to actually have statistics about drop in drug use and the drop in, like they get, they figure out a way to calculate a percentage, but they don't even do that anymore. Look at this. They just say it dropped. They show a picture. 
Yeah, I have a thermometer. <laughs> well, I in the UK, the, uh, there was a little bit of a, it was a legal, they got into some legal trouble, trouble for the way right. they were calculating the, statistics. Yeah, they weren't allowed to show these on TV at all. They were just mm -hmm. like, no way. Now, check this out. This is amazing. Enabling over 51 million students. So there's 51 million students. The claim is that's how many students they've helped to improve their literacy or their ability to study with their technology. Like if because that again, was... if someone goes on to, so like if Tom Cruise goes on an interview and tells people about the misunderstood word, part of their study technology, and 3 million people watched it, they've now enabled 3 million students. Absolutely. Because that's the viewership of that interview. So that's how that's how loose those statistics can can are calculated. I mean, I've seen the team in there calculating that stuff. Right. Right. Because I used on. to believe I used to believe the statistics. I know myself. we all did. Until when I, I got handed I, these, I got handed these and like, hey, write this out. I'm like, yeah, no problem. I'd be like, okay. Okay. And there was always, and we we were we always rounded off in interesting ways. We had this kind of a style sheet that would dictate how you round it off. Right. Like you mm. would, you would never say 50 million. You would, you, uh, you'd never say 499 million, say 50 million. We wouldn't say 50 million. You'd always bump mm. it up one more because it just seems a little more credible. Okay. Instilling tolerance. This is uh, okay. Check United this out. United for human rights. Yeah. So these guys, they, they're look, it's an English language booklet, basically uh, telling, and, and these guys probably don't speak English. And this lovely little Buddhist boy, he's looking at this thing like WTF. Like, like I mean, the, the thing about this campaign is it has it, it is it is Scientology is taking credit for it, but it is the the language and the human rights are one hundred percent from the United Nations document that was written by Eleanor Roosevelt. Right. Right. It's not there. <laughs> so it's very it's 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 very tricky, right? So. Uh, they, I'm sure those um, uh, young uh, monks don't know that it has anything to do with Scientology. If they can read English. And and there was a there were there was a lot there were long periods of time where the booklets did they just said United for Human Rights or Youth for Human Rights and they didn't right. say Church Scientology anywhere. Right. And even now, the fact that they'll say it is in su super teeny tiny like point like five point font. You know, these are funded by the Church of Scientology International. Yeah, or it says um, from the uh, L. Ron Hubbard Library. Right, right. And, and, and the they go to many uh, countries where um, people don't know who that is. They maybe have never heard yeah. of Scientology because there's like a mission there or yeah. maybe not even. Right. And uh, L. Ron Hubbard Library is uh, it's a synonym for uh, Church of Spiritual Technology. They are also known as the L. Ron Hubbard Library. They own all of the works of L. Ron Hubbard. Okay, here they are teaching monks about their human rights. Elevating morality. Yeah, yeah. this is, uh, <laughs> yeah, and list, uh, yeah, 120 million moral education materials, except that they're protecting uh, SA uh, abusers and child abusers and, and, breaking up families and illegally <laughs> trafficking minors uh, and abusing the elder while placing 120 million moral education materials into the hands of, wait for it, oh, people, okay. People. <laughs> yeah, people, All right. Okay, um, everywhere, oh, everywhere, just in case you wondered where. Okay, here's the volunteer ministers. You know, they're the ones that show up the handout bottles of water. For that's uh, Mohammed. That's Mohammed. Oh, that's, that's Mohammed. The guy you, we spoke about last time yeah, in, in, in India. Yeah. That's probably my photo. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to ask you. I, 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 because I recognize a number of these photos from videos you shot. So I yeah. wonder how many of these were like screen, like frames from the, videos. They grab them. Yeah, probably a lot of them. And Mohammed did did actually help a lot of kids and. Um, had it before Scientology was ever a part of it. Right. And then they jumped in and platformed the guy so they could take credit for the <laughs> whole thing. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I remember he was running before Scientology showed up. He was literally running schoolrooms in the open air on sidewalks. On train in, platform, in, train platforms. Yeah. In impoverished and, India. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay. This is my big line. Change one life. 
change the world. And if anybody else needs a clever bumper sticker written, you know my email address. I'm happy to do it for you. First one's free. Okay, so anyway, that's that. Uh, thanks for paying attention. Oh, and then let's let's um, let's look at the end. Our help is yours. Just remember that, folks. If you need a helping hand, you know where to reach out. Uh, and they always use the music. It's sort of very, very avatar, like tribal, ethnic, <laughs> like to try to co-opt some sense of being authentically part of a real culture. It's, it's, if you, you know what I mean. Anyway, so yeah. I want to I want to dive into this other video because mm -hmm. I didn't think we spent so long on that, but that's like. I think we could spend a long time on anything. So this is a video that exists on the Scientology network. And if you're interested, in it, I cut it down. I cut all the promos out because they literally what they do is they, let me bring this up. Um, literally what they do is they follow the exact format of, of, of a, this is a little bit complicated. I hope any of you guys that are interested in broadcasting or advertising might be interested in this. But your broadcast platforms that are advertiser-based, like most notably the History Channel and the Discovery Channel, they have a very specific format. They do their shows. They run their shows 24-7. They're whatever you – what did they used to call that, Rachel? The layout? I forget. Because remember that was that – was, took layout. forever. There's like an Excel spreadsheet that says every hour what's going to repeat and when it's going to repeat. Yeah. It's, 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 there's a whole science to this. At broadcast television, the ones that are advertiser-driven, they have to pay a lot of attention to this because they have to create value for their advertisers. And for some reason, David Miscavige decided we're going to do the same thing, but they don't have advertisers. They have donors, but they that's different. You can just tell them to donate. They don't have advertisers. So they actually had an opportunity to create something very innovative and remarkably different from regular television. And instead of doing that, they cloned regular television. One of the reasons why I would be, fell out of popularity at SFP is I kept bringing this up, mm -hmm. but we don't have advertisers. Why are you breaking for ads? They'd break for an yeah. ad, and then the same guy who was just narrating the show would narrate the ad. And it was meant to look just like regular television. And Shane. everybody, yeah, Shane Johnson, who's a terrific yeah. actor. Um, and so it was meant to mimic exactly broadcast television. So I've cut all those ads out because they're all Scientology ads. And I also I cut out what was the show opening thing called? It has um, it's like a, a I don't know. They they do this thing at the beginning, which says in this show this is what we're going to cover, and you're going to discover and later. Da, 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 da. It's to just. Like Trump. a little, pre like a preview. Yeah, right? but there's a very specific name for it. In it's not the cold Hall. open of the show. It's yeah, it's a cold. That's what it is. The cold open. A cold, okay. Yeah, there's a thing called a cold open. It's like on YouTube when a guy says, um, "Be sure and watch to the end because I'm going to show you." You know, in this, you're going to learn this. And it this, usually this. comes before the show title. Always, always. It always comes before the title. And then they do. And, you know, if you watch best practices on YouTube videos, some of these content creators who are, you know, making quit your job, buddy, they'll tell you this is how you do it. You come on, you do a whole introduction. You promise people what they're going to see, what they're going to get at the end. Then you do your title. So... The, the Church of Scientology had this incredible opportunity to do something really innovative that would have actually, but they're not capable of doing it. Personally, I tried to get them to do it. It's one of the reasons why I got the hell booted out of there. But anyway, um, so I've cut off, I cut out the cold open. Um, I, well, I've got to, I've got to bring this thing up. I've cut all that stuff out because we just want the facts. Okay, here we go. So this is the end of the cold open. Here's the show title. This is part of a show called uh, Inside Scientology and uh, media production, Scientology media production. So now they're going to do this little intro. And there's the studio. This, helic, this drone shot was probably right over the gay bar, right? Pretty much. So. The, the gay bar is just to the right, but just to the yeah. right and below, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Like if you tilt it down, you could see the gay bar, but this will give you kind of. This is where it's situated. And here in the background, I think you can see my cursor. This is uh, ABC Television has a, a studio down there, uh, which coincidentally, my sister was a production manager there for years. 
And my late brother-in-law was a producer director at KCET. So it was really kind of weird. Anyway, so that'll give you an idea. There's a, so this is in relation to downtown LA. There's downtown LA. I, I don't want to watch this whole thing. So we're just gonna, there's the, that's, that was the view from the, uh, the, the gay bar. Okay, so here, now we're going in the gate. Now I'll stop, I'll stop. This was an absolute <laughs> mandated <laughs> miscavige thing. He was always saying, you have to come up with what they call orders of magnitude. You can't just say that the studio or anything is let's say a thousand feet by 50 feet. You have to come up with some things. And so we would come up with the most ridiculous things like big enough to hold a Nimitz class era. Did you, see, did you all see that? Did you all see what that said here? It can hold an aircraft carrier. Yeah. So there's no question that this is a world-class facility I mean, come on, Rachel, if the Church of Scientology just went belly up and somebody really cool took the studio over and we got a chance to go there and produce something, we'd be thrilled. Because oh, it's yeah, a, it's great. Yeah, like it's, 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 it's great. great. All kinds yeah. of toys. Yeah. yeah, it has nothing to do with any of that. You, and it's a his, it, was, it was a historic studio. Yeah, that's covered I mean, in here. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah it was used to be monogram pictures. The, mm -hmm. the, uh, the studio itself... You have the newer buildings, like where we showed you Miss Cabbage's offices. Those were built in the 70s. And then yeah. you have the original studio, which was what was called Monogram Studios, which was built in 1918. It, so it was the oldest running studio in LA, but it was also the most unknown, unheard of, nobody gave a shit about it studio. It wasn't on any studio tour. They basically always just pumped out junk, you know, C uh, movies and, 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 uh, what do they call them? Cereals and stuff like that. So here's a little, this is a little montage of some of the facilities. Now those sets that they're showing um, back a little bit, those well, were built just for this video for and never this used. video and never used. They're not actually. Yeah. We're going to get to that. Any live TV. Yeah, they're, we're not, gonna... they're not actually doing what the people think, but like the don't, yeah. a lot of people donated specifically just to this project. Right, right, exactly. Well, to really understand that, you have to uh, you have to have a discussion about Freedom Magazine. Freedom Magazine, I think it was established in the seventies. I'm not sure when they published their first copy, and it was meant to be a legitimate journal with like Pulitzer Prize winning, um, you know, uh, uh, journalists who would come in and write these articles, and then the church would present that as to say, look, we really are concerned about social issues. Sometime after, I guess, whatever it was, when the, uh, the, the Truth Rundown article was put out, Miscavige turned it into just a hit piece against his own enemies that had left. So the whole idea of SMP was to take Freedom Magazine, its mission to be a, a legitimate whistleblowing entity, and take it onto television. So s &P was really intended to be Freedom TV. And then with all the other stuff, were just intended to be ads. But all it ended up was with a bunch of ads. Freedom TV was never done. So you're, you're referring to those sets. Yeah, so, they were just created to make it look like there are TV, live TV shows coming. And extraordinarily right. expensive cameras were purchased right. that can film live TV that don't work if you take them out of the studio right. and no, nothing is filmed with them in the studio. Right. Nothing they're, just is used. Sit, they're just sitting there um, becoming obsolete. Yeah. Well, we're going to actually later, uh, we're, we're going to show all this stuff that was paid for with donations to the tune of tens and tens of millions of dollars and mm -hmm. never used. So here's one of our, hold on. I wanted to just, uh, this is one of the, that's Aaron. Famous yeah, it, quote: "We're not going to put a dike on Scientology TV." Yeah. Oh, she's the one. It was Aaron. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's. A, I guess she's a mini oligarch. She's not one of the main oligarchs. Mm -hmm. She's just kind of like, uh, yeah. She's a very she's high, a front front facing PR PR person. Yeah, who, she spoke. Uh, it, speaks it, speaks at events and yeah. uh, some has spoken to the news and things like that before. Let me see. Okay, so then this is the. 
This is the uh, monogram pictures. Yeah, the original one. Whoops, sorry. I totally went to hit my volume mm -hmm. and I hit the wrong thing. Okay, here we go. Okay, this is this is an outside guy who did the infrastructure. There, that's Chandra Lawrence, and you might. We were speaking about her the other day as one of the one of the people who now runs uh, Scientology who, management. But who AA run calls Chandra. Yeah, Chandra. And yeah, I'm not going to correct him. He can keep going. No, he's he's that's totally fun. <laughs> Go uh, for it. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, she's one of the executives. I, I have to tell you, right after that episode I did with <laughs> Aaron, um, Catherine Olson, who used to be in middle management in LA, I think you know who she is. She <laughs> sent me a text. She said, Oh, by the way, uh, Molly took over at SP because Chandra was busted off into some program, and then Chandra <laughs> came back, and then Molly went off to do something. So they, I mean, that's that happened when I was there too. So yeah, it's always they, happening. They they flip flop like Chandra th because no one is ever allowed to just maintain a position. No, the, this so is why they, I, they they can't. They would become too. They would have too too much of a feeling of self worth and value and become dangerous, right? Right. So they'll someone in ethics will find, or some executive, or someone will find something, whether it's valid or it's made up, um, to crush you, and then you know, throw you on a program and see how you do. And then right. bring, bring you back up feeling right. all um, gr grateful. And um, I'm right. not worthy. I'm not worthy. Yeah. And it's that cycle over and over again with, with all of these people that happens with Jules right there. It happens with her. It happens yeah. with um, dude, bro. Who's on the right. Whose nose we see whose name I'm forgetting, but I'll remember. Right. It. Right. Meanwhile, this guy here, uh, Chan Mahan, who owns a company that does infrastructure for motion picture studios, his company is just, you know, he comes and goes and has paid millions of dollars to to work out the engineering problems at the studio. Uh, while well, these guys are all making barely 50 bucks a week. Okay. Okay, this is just about the upgrades, which are pretty impressive on the studio, but we're going to just, and here's the scripting. This is kind of showing the different departments. This is the, uh, just tell me, okay, so this is what the old studio, this is the old part of the studio. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I cut this up next shit out. because. Of... So a lot of the staff uh, and a lot of volunteers worked on those renovations. Right, and right. Some, and there were some pretty bad injuries from um, uh, CERG members. Um, to do construction positions that should be held by professionals or by right. doing it without being given the correct PPE, um, like masks or, you know, ventilators or gloves and working with things like they're like acid blasting the old right. bricks and things like that. And, and there was one uh, VFX professional who uh, was very badly burned, like acid burn. And she had, she was one of the only professionals they had there. She had worked for Industrial Light and Magic. Right. Well, they sent her there as, a, as an apprentice, right? They paid? No, no. Yeah. Before I, she oh, joined I, the Sea organization, she worked really? for Industrial Light and Magic. She's oh. the real deal. She was a compositor on things like Star Wars. Wow. Like, she did she wasn't super 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 high up but she was right, a right, vfx right, right. a professional vfx artist ran into so much cr craziness as a professional there and ran into so much resistance and then was horribly uh, injured and and burned i believe with acid and not really taken care of she ended up uh and and then the people who were like just seward members who were vfx people were fighting her like you know because it's you're, you're trying to talk about professional things with people who, who just grew up in a church and don't, and they've learned their stuff just from this, this very isolated view within a bubble. So right. I believe that was probably quite difficult and frustrating for her. She ended up leaving the C organization. I won't say her name. Um, I do believe she's still a public maybe, right. um, but she, brilliant, brilliant person. There was another guy who was on the renovation staff. I don't remember his name. I, I believe he was like, uh, a staff member from Russia or something and didn't end up at uh, SNP he was on this renovations project. So they could very cheaply, despite taking millions of dollars of donations, they wanted to use this slave labor, right? right? Which you can pay, pay pennies an hour. And he ended up in the, in state in stage B 
um, one of the studios that we saw, he, he was putting, they were putting the denim insulation in on the walls and he staple gunned, like nail gunned through his hand. So then That's they had right. to pull, pull it out and clean it and, and get, take, take it to get like, I think he had to go get a tetanus shot and get it, the wound handled. He came back a few weeks later, was working in there again. And they put him back on the same job and he nail gunned through his hand. A second right. time, a second right. time. So he had no, uh, he had no business in that position. It was just cruel, right. and I, 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 it was just. Um, mo mo I know of multiple other injuries that occurred. Um, there was no OSHA presence, and obviously there were OSHA violations. Um, and there's certain things that you should just be trained to do for the safety yeah. of yourself and others. Well, and sometimes. Just, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, the renovations, the detailed renovations in the old part of the studio were really impressive. All of the books, bricks were redone. All of the original um, window millions were ground down to the original metal and the screws, the brass screws were polished. And that was, and the, and the staff was really proud of it. But those guys just killed themselves doing it. Hey, you know, the other thing is sometimes some staff members would shoot a nail gun through their hand because they were hoping to just, you know, get off work that day. It could have been. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but either way, it shouldn't have happened. Yeah. Okay, so moving along, here's a, uh, here's just some old stock footage from old Hollywood. This is a guy talking about the... the this is Lubin Manufacturing. This is I don't know why this is even in here because this is uh, at the Hollywood Bowl. This is actually the precursor to Paramount. So I don't, they're just throwing all kinds of just stupid shit in here. It's to get the clout like we yeah. are positioning ourselves yeah, totally. as a premier you know facility yeah. within hollywood and hollywood will respect us yeah so this is the old studio and then you can see the stages and obviously this tower were built later and there it is in relation to that's okay so yeah there they're showing this is exactly what you're showing you're, you're saying these are where the studio is in relation to all the other studios. They're like, look at us. So this gives them an excuse to put up the logos for Paramount, MGM, 20th Century Fox, Warner Brothers. Okay, and then this would be the administration building built by KECT in the 70s. Uh, mm -hmm. and this is where Miscavige's offices were. This would be where the basement, the dreaded HCO, where I was screamed at that I was worse than a wog by your friend Will. Uh, so... <laughs> Yeah, and this oh, is yeah, why I, best I, buds. I, yeah, best buds. Your homie, your homie will. I never seen this before where every Thursday before two, all of the staff would have to go to the basement for meter chucks. I'd never seen that. Do they do that at other works? They never do that. They, at yeah, that's a, it's very common at flag. Yeah, they never did that. Oh, I guess that makes sense because mm. the, the HCO came from and and for people who don't know, a meter check would be that someone just uh, from uh, from the HCO, which is the ethics section, just takes you and has you sit holding the cans, and they say nothing to you, and you're supposed to say nothing, and they just look at your needle, yeah, with the sensitivity really high, yeah. and if there's a pattern on the needle that that, that they looks a like. certain way then it means that you have something wrong with you or you have crimes, you're hiding something. Yeah, and what's crazy is that if you watch all of the staff in line while they're waiting for the meter check, they're all, hi, how are you? Everything's great because they're trying to pump themselves up into this mood because <laughs> they might be in a crappy mood. Like maybe they didn't like their lunch, but they don't mm -hmm. want it to, be they believe it might show up in the meter. And then, you know, they wouldn't leave the basement potentially for days. Okay. And a lot of them are not actually trained technically. So they honestly don't really know how it's working or what's going on. Right. They just know, you know, you got to be there. And it's an, it's like an, it's like a point of intimidation. Yeah. And then if this corner of this building, this, that was my office, I had a lovely view. And <laughs> so I had really the nicest corner office mm -hmm. in the whole place. Uh, so yeah, here it is uh, again, another computer representation. This guy, whatever restorations, like who cares? Uh, oh yeah, now we're getting into this is the old studio. Now we're going to get into one of the most outrageous lies that I ever encountered about L. Ron Hubbard's past. You know how they constantly lie about like what his history was. 
So we're going to go, uh, I don't know why this is just, maybe, maybe I accidentally doubled up on the edit, but let's go. Okay, so these are the restorations that Rachel was talking about. Look at every book, all the mortar, every window million, everything is perfect. This was done 12, 14 hours a day by Sea Org members. See this, now they're talking about that they stripped all the windows. Stripped the whatever. windows down. Yeah, they, they yeah. really are like, they're really buttering this whole thing up. Okay. Uh, yeah, because this is what it's about, folks. This is what makes an organ, like, look at this, okay? They stripped the bolts down and all the hardware and they discovered they were made out of brass. So these poor staff members, they had to just endlessly scrub these things and polish them. And they, I, but this is what, is this not what makes an organization great, Rachel? <laughs> I mean, this is, this it's proves just you're a, not an evil cult. This it's proves a bid it. for, it's a bid for respect and, you know, um, yeah. Historical yeah. renovations and look at our history. Yeah. We're restoring Hollywood. So the film yeah. industry, you should respect us. But it's yeah. just at the expense of, of you know, sleep, like staff experiencing injuries, being exposed to chemicals yeah. unsafely, um, not sleeping enough, working with, with the, um, so any staff working don't follow California labor laws. I mean, California no. labor laws, like even if you're not union and you work in the film industry in Los Angeles, you have to follow California labor laws. I'll be yeah. on like little self-funded short films that you know uh someone's paying for out of their own pocket and they're like okay six hours you get a 30 minute break you know because the film industry is quite hard uh it's quite right. physical back backbreaking work if you're crew so it's followed here a vast majority of the time and renovations and construction work is also quite difficult but none of these things are followed and the other thing that that did happen in this time is they were the SP was supposed to have workers comp workmen's comp and um i kept pushing on it because somebody that i that i knew who was um on, on my crew um and who i was close to got injured um and needed a, a surgery and i was like look we have workmen's comp Let's just use that. And then the, the MLO, um, who was uh, Naomi uh, Strong, right, right, was being right. our MLO. Sorry, that's medical liaison office, which is a not medically trained, totally unqualified right. person who decides whether you get medical care or not and what medical care you get and what medicine you can take and what surgery you can have and things. She told me, look, there's a problem. We don't actually have workers, workers comp. We actually, right. we let it slip and we don't have it. So for this vast period of time of many months, maybe even over a year, they didn't actually have it. And we're supposed to legally have it. I probably was not supposed to be told that. And then I was told, well, look, even if we do get workman's comp, we don't want to put it under that because it's going to, we'll have to pay more money and we'd have to get, get this person money. And so there's all these like shenanigans going on, like with people, working up on scaffolding and working up on lifts and working with things where they can be severely injured or die, you know, you can right. be, it, it's, it's dangerous. And so, so, but it, it's just, there's nothing wrong with the historical renovation, but finding little pieces of brass as a part of Hollywood history is not more important than the, than people. Well, not at, right. It shouldn't be. Well, one cannot be done at the uh, expense you know, of the other. Yeah, exactly. I mean, at the end of the day, when Scientology has completely collapsed and they're gone, and they have to give the studio up, they will have they will leave it in the state of a gem, and then hopefully somebody will go down and erect a plaque that dedicates it to the hardworking people who had been brainwashed into doing the renovations. 320,000 bricks. I'm surprised it doesn't say enough bricks to sink a Nibbets class aircraft carrier <laughs> or something because they love that shit. Enough bricks, you know, to stretch from here to the moon. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised they miss an opportunity to do that. Like, here's the exact technology of how they handled all the bricks. There's one. Look at this. They even have a picture of it. Rachel, the guy's, he's not wearing gloves. Look at this. He's, he's not, not wearing wear gloves. He's not wearing a mask. Nothing. He's just standing up on it. He's got some rubber boots. Yeah. Whoopee. <laughs> I have rubber boots. Yeah. So, and he's acid washing. Okay. So for some reason, these guys are. Well, it's, you know, and realize none of those shots are the actual renovation. Yeah, that was my team that was doing all this. Did you shoot that? This, 
Yeah, yeah, it was me or people from my crew. My crew would split into two. So a right. lot of these shots I was uh, on camera for, um, or they were someone from my my team, and I was aware of these shots going on at this time, right? right um, I can right. tell you what we were shooting on and what dolly we were using and everything, right? right. Um, so uh, they were all set up. You would get people and put them in the outfit to look the way you wanted it to look, and it's all set up. They're all they're all this right. is all make believe. Yeah, this was a lovely screening room that they found and restored, which never got room for, used for anything. Uh, this was the original screening room for the studio. I remember doing a, sh a still shoot in there, but it never got, it was supposed to be used for special like community presentations they'd offered up to the community and so forth. Well, the but community it, isn't allowed in there because it, there's a paranoia about letting Well, Miscavige is whatever he's property. there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. But yeah, this place is, you know, that's Hollywood architecture from, from the late teens, early 20s. And yeah, it's a, a real screening room. They had a real projector mm -hmm. in there. I don't think they ever showed a film. Did you ever see a 35 millimeter film ever projected in there? Never, no. I, ne I never did. And we had, I mean, all the we had lots of films at Gold that were 35 millimeter, but I don't think anybody even knew how to run it. I just turned the light on. There's a couple oh, yeah. of staff staff. Yeah, but those are but those are there. videos. But those they had a video projector. Those are there. videos. Yeah, I did yeah. see videos projected. Yeah, those aren't films. Those are videos. They had a super high end video projector in there. Okay, so now we're going to go down to the L. Ron Hubbard office. I hope. Uh, oh no, this is That's the, the the old vaults. Yeah, the old vaults where they used to store the nitrate film. These are, by the way, th this is they're, they're trying this. to do this reproduction. These film reels are, are like. Are yeah, they're like yeah. from the 80s. Like these, these are aluminum. I did filaments. not do the shot of the oh, yeah. person with the mustache. It looks like a, I don't know who that is. Yeah, they did not have plastic reels not, or aluminum reels back then. I'm I was sorry. not there for that uh, okay. shoot because that's well, silly. You're off the hook. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, and so they found some old pictures of what these vaults look like, and they had the artists at, at uh, SMP. Uh, reproduced. They were so proud of this. Like this was, oh yeah, because it, it was called Charles Ray Productions, and that's where they kept the payroll. So anyway, we're we're gonna just uh, zoom along here because this thing is really long. Okay, so here's another. We'll we'll listen to an interview. These are fun. It's the lobby staff where they do the staff meeting. Yeah, the staff meetings, and that's where we had a a two day. I think it was a two day confab where all of the pros and all of the top uh, staff members piled in there. And a guy named Lynn Farney, who's the legal co coordinator for OSA, went through these huge binders and he briefed everybody on everything David Miscavige had ever been accused of, from killing L. Ron Hubbard to killing his mother-in-law and all of the various... And he just briefed for two days because I think Miscavige was worried that all these new people coming in wouldn't have heard all these horrible things. So he wanted to have somebody get up there and say, these are all the horrible things and they're all, you know, none of them are true, but it was the weirdest thing in the world sitting in there for two days and listening to that. I heard about that and I missed it. I was, I was out of town. That would have been. Yeah, it, it, it was. It oh, look, this is my, that's my campaign on the wall there. The welcome to the age of answers. Uh, so, Okay, let's just move forward here. It's always magic hour. Yeah, this is just more whatever, more propaganda. Okay, this is a total lie, 100%. Is it? Okay. How, so, yeah, you t I don't yeah. I only know the tor story I was told. Yeah, the story you were told that, that two weeks before the opening of the event, they somehow miraculously found this letter. Right. What story were you told? <laughs> I didn't know it was two weeks before. I thought that they had this. No, this letter. No, they miraculously found this letter. Okay, so you have to understand, when you're telling the history of a person, a supposedly great person, like a saint or some kind of great religious leader, there's always going to be these little miracles that happen that enable you to connect that guy's existence to whatever it is you're doing. So this letter is a complete fabrication. I spent hours, countless hours, researching Hubbard's relationship with Hollywood. 
and he was never written to this. They completely made this up. This, you know, they have all these old typewriters. I mean, they have every old typewriter that he ever owned. So it's nothing for them to fabricate a letter. Uh, but the, uh, the provenance of this letter is completely in question. But so, who do you think would have made it made it up, like fabricated? And how how do you know it was fabricated? Well, I know that it's fabricated because uh, they're okay. In all fairness, I'm making this huge assumption, but I'm making the assumption because there is absolutely no record, any historical record that exists anywhere of L. Ron Hubbard be, having anything to do with adventure serials or whatever this the, the name of the company was, if we roll. Do you get what I'm saying? Like it just yeah, doesn't it's exist. Not the, it's not the group that shot. It's not the company that shot. Um, no, it's not. The, and, uh, and tre Treasure Treasures, Island. Yeah, that was Columbia Pictures. Okay, so here's the deal. The, it says in here, uh, January 1937, uh, we have purchased for your motion picture rights and other rights in your manuscript story entitled The Secret of Treasure Island as more particularly set forth in the said contract, blah, blah, blah. So th this is actually true that the, his only participation in Hollywood was that Columbia Pictures purchased the rights to four of his books and turned them into serials and that one of those he shared a screen credit with with four of the people. I think he got a screen credit on yeah, treasure, a, couple, yeah. a, few, a, a couple of episodes, a, few, a handful of episodes of... Uh, Treasure Island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, yeah, yeah. Secret of Treasure Island. No, it was a serial that was shown in theaters. Uh, oh, it was for theaters? Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, it was a serial back in the days when you went to the movies the, for the entire day. You know, you watch right. a cartoon, you watch a serial, you watch a newsreel, you watched a B film, which is why we call them B movies. And then you watch the A film, which was the feature, mm. which is why we call them features. And back before television, so, that that's how the film, that's how going to the movies worked and so hubbard was supposedly this really had this illustrious career in hollywood where in fact all they did was tap him for some of his material for serials and nobody watched serials people were like buying popcorn when the serials were playing you know they went there to see gone with the wind they didn't go there to, or maybe the b movie and gone with the wind not the serial you know they usually always watch the cartoons and the B features and the A features, they never watch the serials. And yet the church, they brag about this illustrious career he had because of the serials. Like they called Treasure, the Secret Treasure Island the most successful serial in the history of the motion picture industry. There was no way of judging the success of a serial because nobody went to the movies to see serials. They were just a little added on thing. You know, so your kid would not get bored while you went and got popcorn. You'd say, hey, Johnny, sit here and watch a serial. I'll be right back. Like literally... So th there is no doubt in my mind that they they fabricated this letter. I mean, look at the letter. It's like, have you ever seen stationery like this? I mean, it looks so phony with like little I pictures mean, on it. It's like. <laughs> yeah, when we would shoot stuff like this and I can't, I, I shot so many pieces of paper with, um, with a 300 watt Fresnel with like right. a handmade gobo go right. in front of it, right. making slashes. I, yeah. I shot like thousands yeah, of pages right. like that so i can't honestly remember if it was me shooting this or not but a lot of times with this historic stuff they would be giving you a fabricated copy of it to shoot anyway yeah but i'm just saying of course they would give you a copy of it because they didn't want you to set fire to it under the lights yeah or touch it with your greasy fingers yeah yeah <laughs> or exactly. drop yeah. it or whatever yeah, so you, um but it would have been a exact replica right so the concept being why do I have balloons? Hey, good job, Rachel. How did What's you that? do that? I don't know. Why you do I did have something. balloons? I don't know. You did something. It's my birthday. I'm uh, not even yeah. touching the thing. Yeah, but you, yeah, and it's just your your natural spirit deserves you balloons. Me balloons. Um, yeah. cool. <laughs> Um, but any, anyway, just look at the design yeah. of the stationery. This, there's nothing like this existed and this, ever. The, it became this whole big story, true or untrue. Of, I have no idea. Was that this it, it came was part, from right. the location of SNP? So then, people, staff were saying, like individuals were saying, L. Run Hubbard must have been here and seen this place, or right. come to this room right. for a meeting and postulated, which is right. like. Which is like um, making a strong decision about something that's going to happen in the future, right? And postulated um, that he would, we would own this building and change the world from it, from this studio in the future. 
Yeah, but it's it's what all religions do when they're talking about their great leaders. They fake this kind of stuff. Uh, and this is absolute. But the thing is, they found the letter two weeks before the opening of the, and then it became. Uh, Where was uh, it found? I don't know. I don't remember the story. They found it in some archive somewhere. All of a sudden, they found it in a box just in time for the opening of the event. Then it got written into the speech. And then, I, most famously, Yeah, it's right there. It's supposedly in the same property. Yeah, well, the on Sunset Drive, which is the street behind the studio. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So suppose this is the address. Now we supposedly that address was on the but door. The, but that's, that's the inside. Yeah, but I told him to put it there because it made a better shot. Oh, so that's <laughs> your that bullshit is your fault. Yeah, bitch. that's yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, that's my. I think I okay, remember you. I shot this. It was yeah, yeah. It was really hard to fit okay. through the you door. See, yeah, you see the this camera. door? Yeah, or, no, I remember. Yeah. We were trying to push your ass through the door, but yeah. no, we see this the, door here. Um, see this door here? Yeah, yeah. That would have been the door on Sunset Avenue, yeah. that that address would have been on, but it was just too hard. So they turned this room into a little museum, and they put that fake letter in there, and I was just like, I never realized it until recently. I went, wait a minute, who the hell? He never worked for these people. There never was any such thing. So, but you know, if you think about all of his war records and all of those documents and the Boy Scout stuff, that's just faked. Like experts have looked at that so much of it and deemed it fake. And this letter is just another one of those, those, those fake things. But yeah, you can blame it on me because I told them to put the address there to shoot. It made a better shot. Okay, so what do we have here? We have more. Cool. Now explain to me, what was the difference between the gray uniforms and the fancier uniforms with the sport coats? Well, if you, if you're doing a job where you get dirty, like moving gear around or you mean you actual know, work crawling around the server room. Yeah. Then you're not going to wear a, a tie and a sport coat, a polyester sport coat. Yeah. So that that's literally the only difference. And some people would have uh, both depending on what they were doing that day. Right. Right. You could jump in the dumpster, get sent to jump in the dumpster and stay late cleaning out the dumpster in your in your tie and your sport coat if you Oh were nice, nice. In if someone was in trouble. Nice. I, I just... never wore that thing, but Yeah, yeah. This is the uh, server room which they very imaginatively called Hal after the computer in 2001. <laughs> if anybody Oh, Hal, but they <laughs> renamed it to High Availability Line. Oh my god. These people are so well, it was... Hal wasn't Hal talking back a lot though. In the movie, Hal uh, killed everybody on board, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so he's like, yeah. Hal was the no. villain. He was an early AI villain. He was the first motion picture AI villain. So of course, they it made... is a, obviously a very impressive three thousand terabytes. Okay, whatever. But yeah, um, that's kind of like not that much anymore. It's not I mean, that much. We're like, <laughs> like today, we're like talking petabytes. 3,000. It's not that much. 3,000 flash drives. It's 8,000 yeah. floppy disks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's because they don't shoot 4K. They still, right. shoot, they still shoot HD. They don't shoot 4K. Yeah, because that's all you need for broadcast. But what about mm -hmm. the future? They're not future-proofed, but that's a whole nother. Okay, the cameras just... are 4K capable because I made I, I was like definitely like making sure that that yeah, was something. Yeah, listen, was you know, we can argue all day long whether um, Miscavige is uh, asexual or whether he's a sexual beast and is pounding his assistant. But one thing that is inarguable is that he was really anal about things like this. Cable management. It is very cable. sexy. That is yeah. very sexy cable management. Oh, yeah. And it had to be. It, it had is. To be. Yeah. And no, and, and it was spaghetti uh, before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it was spaghetti that worked for people. And there was a person who maintained the spaghetti. So whatever. Yeah, exactly. You know, the thing is, it is it's beautifully done by an outside company. Right. And it's yeah, we were shooting all these. Dude, we had the Panther dolly in there. And it was like, like this all cool and wild and boom down on the cables, but it's just, it's the raw, it's, it's like emphasis on the wrong thing. Yeah, totally. You know, it's like, what about, I thought we were about people. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let me, I'm going to, I'm going to get up to this. Yeah. This is the guy who uh, his company did all the cable management. IMT. 
Yeah, I'm, I wonder what his home uh, home entertainment system looks like. Okay, now I'm going to just stop. We're going to take a really short break. Feel free to talk to people because I have to let my dog out of his crate because he's freaking out, okay? Well, why don't you ask me a question or if you have a question from a chat, throw it up at me. Uh, okay. Uh, I don't actually see I can't see, any see anything. Yeah, I know. I can't. I'm, I'm looking for questions. Okay, here you can you can discuss this comment from. Okay, it says so Alexander Saltz. So funny from an outside perspective, it's so obvious what and why they do it. They copy the different stereotypes of all kinds of advertisements and just have to make sure no one checks the web. Yeah, so I think there's like, a, yeah, there's a. a wanting to be original sometimes and a wanting to copy stereotypes sometimes like let's be taken take taken seriously let's be successful i mean it, it reminds me of the the eyes of tammy Faye. i think it's a fantastic film actually about these um about the the history of some of the christian networks and there was oh right you know, tammy tammy fay and um her her husband, who was just embezzling insane amounts of money, right. and they were they were copying what other news stations were doing, and then the right. power struggle that happened. So, um, I, I and I know um, that for the copycat thing, I know we had a conversation in one of the stages because obviously the the Mormons, the uh, Church of Latter Day Saints, has a huge AV. They have more yeah, AV facilities, major, yeah. major AV facilities, right? So he, uh, David Miscavish was in uh, Studio B and we were talking about, okay, well, let's, if we get a filmic style camera, like a high end, like the most high end camera for here for filming special stuff that needs to be really filmic or maybe like a Scientology ad or like right. something high end, right? Or like anything that Mish would want to shoot with would be this fancy <laughs> pants camera, right? Yeah. Um, so uh, we had been speaking with uh, Sony and we've been speaking with Aerie, um, Aeroflex, which uh, right. makes super high. The, all the, uh, the Oscar winning films are are Aries and, and, and Sony's and then Aries and it's the top cameras, right? Right. Um, arguably there's, there's red and other things too, but um, he said, uh, well, what camera do the Mormons have? What's the fanciest oh. camera the Mormons oh. have? And um, so we asked the the Airy rep, and they had a, um, a Alexa. Um, it's not a studio. They had. It the, was an Alexa studio. Really? No, they, didn't, they didn't have the studio. They had the Alexa open uh, class. Uh, the Alexa X. What was it? Anyway, I don't remember what it was because a number of years ago, right? Right. But they didn't have the studio one with the actual physical. Um, the bigger spot in it where you could actually have a spinning. Yeah, yeah, it had, um, a, had an actual shutter. Mirror, mirrored shutter. An actual traditional, like, like film style mirrored shutter. Right. And so you can get, you could pay an extra like $20,000 or $30,000 and get this optical shutter, which, right. in my opinion, for the type of things a TV studio is shooting, I'm not talking for the films that tech films that used to be shot on film, I totally get it. For a TV studio, why, like why would you need that? And he didn't have anyone even remotely qualified to operate a camera like that, um, unless it was going to be me running around shooting things with Mitch, honestly, at that time. Well, so, but well he was just, like, but, he wanted it because the, it was one step better than what the Mormons had. Right. So he's like, I want to see that camera, test that camera, get that camera here. It, 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 and I was like, do we care what the Mormons are shooting with or? Like, is it about showing off and beating other religions or is it about people and, you know, helping man, you know, helping humankind and saving the world right. and like uh, yada, yada, yada. Right. Uh, um, yeah. I'm trying to find this photo. Uh, shit. I we didn't, didn't end, were... they didn't end up buying that camera. At, at yeah. Well, there are a that. couple of things. One, I was just looking for a photo when we all went up to uh, BYU TV and. Right, um, right. Yeah, because he had us go up to the Mormon TV station, which they had basically based on a Discovery Network station. But um, the thing, well, there's two things here. One, 
I don't know if you saw it, but I went on uh, Cults to Consciousness with Shalise and Sola and did a whole episode about. Uh, I did an episode about how over the years David Miscavige uh, was so inspired. He was very influenced by the Mormon Church, not the Mormon religion, but the Mormon Church. Uh, and that's just another way that I hadn't realized that he was. But the other thing is he didn't know yet whether the film, whether we were going to shoot like commercials on film at SMP. And I really wanted to work, to stay there. Like I was initially just down there to help set it up. We're like putting work. these technical lines in. And I was on the part of this project to put in all these technical lines and deal with properly budgeting and spending millions of dollars. And right. I could not get a, a straight answer as to what we were planning for. I know. I know Nobody but it, knew. And it's very what? frightening, Mitch, because if you do it wrong, like if I don't psychically predict, like I should have called the, the 1-800 number, the psychic hotline or something, because if I didn't psychically <laughs> right. predict properly what gear we would need to be able to shoot something, which we didn't know what was going to be at gold and what right. was going to be done at, at S&P. And what right. was going to happen and what wasn't going to happen, right? So consequently, the event team put in all these event live event cameras and nothing is shot with them. And it's right. it's hundreds of that. I mean, one camera, one of those Grass Valley cameras is like $45,000 for the body. Right. The lenses are between twenty dollars and $80,000 per lens. And there'll be like four or six of them in one studio. And there's like three studios, um, right. robotic, robotic, robo cameras installed. And that's not even the line that then is like the, then there's another control panel that comes back in a room like this. So someone can hit record and they can do like that live. I'm like, I'm cutting your football game. I'm editing, I'm editing the Super Bowl live, right? It's the same system right. that they use for the Super Bowl or right. Right. You know, exactly. Uh, whatever and you know nba games like what, whatever so it's that same system with the same or super expensive stuff um all put in and and none of it i've never seen any of it used and i have unless there's something that's out that i'm unaware of it's not being no, used it's uh, something they're literally this stuff goes obsolete so fast you right, buy a camera right. five years five years later that camera's uh like all, worth very little and you know 10 years later it's worth nothing right so this is Absolutely. years ago this stuff was all put in in like 2017 2016 yeah yeah 2016 2017 right so yeah it's, it's like, amazing it's it's yeah go, go on it's it's just wild the amount of money that was being put in but the lack of actual planning Right. It, it was it was really wild and it just seemed it just seemed uh it just seemed wasteful. And who knows, maybe your trip to BYU yeah, and the I was fact just that they had that. all this stuff is there the reason is. <laughs> yeah. all, mil, yeah. um, you know a million dollars was spent to put in live TV equipment. Right, right. So How we about, then like this, does this look familiar? This is what you're I talking about. I remember that day. <laughs> yes, I remember that day. <laughs> yeah, like millions of oh dollars worth of equipment that got put on display and photographed. And, and very little of it ever used. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's so let's true. let's get back to our our little tour here. So this is the control room, where they where they bring in all of the uh, the video supposedly. Okay. So this is this is um, Lucy. That's Lucy. That's uh, Bart Simpson's daughter, uh, yeah. Nancy Cartwright's daughter. Who's yes. Wor worked in there forever. I should bring her voice up because. She sounds like a cartoon character. She has such a cute voice. <laughs> she sounds like a little Bart Simpson. <laughs> okay, anyway. <laughs> Sweet girl. Anything you want to say about that? Uh, no, I mean... I, I, I don't know. There's There's all kinds of random technical information, but I... I don't know how re relevant it is. And some of it's yeah. going to be like so technical. It's like, our, you know, our battle for being able to shoot 24 P instead of 60 I and all this stuff that yeah. everyone listening is going to be like, what are you even talking about? And yeah. who cares? Right. You'd have yeah. to be like a total film industry person to care. So it doesn't, it yeah. doesn't really matter. Um, yeah. I think the long and the short of it is any of you kitties who want to go out and shoot a film, shoot it in 24 P. Okay. Please, yeah. 
So anyway. Um, okay, so what do we got here? Hold on. Oh, this is uh, now there's a whole other section of the studio where they do marketing and magazines. And uh, yeah, now we're getting into magazines. This is a guy who used to work for Condé Nast. Yeah, so this is the corridor where all the magazines are done. Okay, so in case you're wondering uh, where all of the all of that mail that some of you might be getting comes from, this is where it's all designed. Yep. A lot of these people are probably not there anymore. I don't know who this guy is. I don't even recognize him. Uh, so, yeah, this is just more about the magazines. Now, you might be interested. This is actually a shot of where everything's printed at a place, not books, yeah. just magazines. It's called the Dissemination Center. There it is. Yeah, that's also in Los Angeles. Yeah, now I think we might have shot some of this together because I we shot did. this place yeah. so yeah, many we... times because I remember going down there yep. with, a dr with a drone. This place was so uh -huh. big that we shot like this stuff flying a drone through the building. Yep, yep, I remember. Anyway, so that's the magazine thing. They're bragging about that. And then Oh, and then there they were they had a they had these <laughs> No one here knew how to do anything with these cameras. Yeah, so these were the cameras. Hold on, hold on, Rachel, hold on, hold on, hold on. These were the cameras that they brought in for the remote teams, right? Yes, uh, yeah. any video team. This is the B camera. That's the F. Uh, no, right. not even FXX. FS five. The set, the B camera, and they just wanted to do a shot to make it look like these people actually did the planning. None of them did any of the planning. They wouldn't know which camera. end of that camera to look at. No. So they're just like, put it on the table and let's talk about it. And if you, if you could, if anyone can read lips and see what they're actually saying there, it's probably pretty random. Yeah, they're saying, okay, so we're going to break for lunch at exactly one o'clock and we all need to be back here at 1.15. That's what she actually yeah. said. <laughs> yeah, okay, so this is audio stuff. They have amazing mixing facility. Oh, somehow we're back to camera. Mm. Yes, yes. Yeah, this that was Sean's where she, yes, she was pointing, saying, now, is that a video camera? I think yeah. I just read her lips. And then let's, a video uh, camera? let's transition off this, like, Baird McAllister tungsten yeah, this, 5K. Uh, yeah. Because when you're old. studying in a course room, you need an old 5K on at 1% right, right. to just warm you up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This must have been, These are okay. beautiful lights. I love these historic historic lights. Yeah, they, they restored history. all of these lights. They are They're a piece of film history. Yeah, yeah they are. They're old, um, whatchamacallit. Um, but that's actually a sound stage. And then this crew, uh, a lot of them don't exist in those positions anymore, whoops. but they were flown in from around the world to be trained in two weeks on how to professionally film uh, videos. Yeah. Yeah, they're turning them into film crews. Yeah, the idea was that they would then de deploy it around the world and they'd go out and shoot these fake propaganda videos. I mean, did you see, look at that equipment. I, was it ever even put in use? Oh, all that's in use, 100%. Oh, okay. The Is video that, teams are rock and, ro rocking and rolling. And that's the, that's the line, those are the lines that I created yeah exactly that, that stuff's in use all over yeah okay what was her name i forgot uh sophie right right british right and hill, this, hill, the, sophie hill. The, right there's uh bill hoshevnikov power of lighting oh right uh, okay. one back one back right doing a seminar mm -hmm. okay And then oh, they're, they're, here they are, the new kids. You know, I don't think they could. I mean, I, I guess they all spoke English, but they're from. They all did over not the world. all. They did not all speak English. They did that not. Must have been, that must now. have been rough. It, that was tough for for them. It's a lot to learn uh, in a really short period of time. Um, but they were, you know, they were most. They were mostly really good people who really felt like they were going to be able to do something exciting and make a difference. Right. And, right. 
uh, a lot of them didn't didn't make it. Yeah, it's unfortunate because their idealism which is used against them. Okay, so check it out. This is one of the most amazing, that's probably Sophie right there because they had no talent. That's probably her. Um, so this is makeup and wardrobe and this, it's just an absolutely amazing facility, but it was never used. I never saw anybody being made up in there because they never did that kind of work. Mm -hmm. And this is the, uh, this is actually, oh, the art department. Oh my God. And they stuck the art department in a basement which really pissed me off because the art department should be on the top floor where the light is really good. And instead they have David McScavage on the top floor where the light was really good. The poor art department, they were just <laughs> struggling away. This is the shop. Mm -hmm. Who cares? Let's go forward. Okay. Now this is what I wanted to talk about. This was the thing we mentioned earlier about freedom TV. So tell us a little bit about this set. It was created just for this shoot to make it look like something was being done. And it was never done. This TV it was show never was done. Those are staff me staff members, I think, sitting yeah. there. And they've um, never pre started pretending to be on a TV show. Right. And the, you know who the I people, think this is? People using these cameras. I mean, the cameras work, but yeah. I, they Can don't you? even have the staff. They didn't even have the staff in place to be able to run those cameras through to a final product yet. So right. Do you, can you see my cursor here? I'm circling the woman. The woman sitting there. I yeah. think, let's watch. I think it's Kirsten Catano. Is that Kirsten? Doesn't that look No, like it's not. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe they brought her. She kind of looks like. It's someone else whose name I can't remember. Oh, too bad. I got excited. <sighs> okay. And so that keep... person's just doing the clapper for one camera without the. Yeah, exactly. No, no common mark. You can't see me. Who cares? Yeah. So anyway, the, this is the VO department. This is the one person who probably ruined the studio more than anybody else. Whatever the fuck his name. I mean, whatever his name was. Uh, yeah, that toys, was. Oh, a lot yeah, of toys. Yeah. The robotic cameras. Right, right. Back to the control room. Hold on. And now we're talking about the actual shooting where they go out and do all these propaganda videos. Here, I'll just play a little bit of this. Yeah, so those are those crews. Those are the actual crews that go out and film things. Yeah. And that is, they're out there with their actual gear. Right. Okay, good. <laughs> just so many shots of just picking up a camera. I know. They keep going back to it. Okay, let's see what Erin has to say for herself. Now it goes into the TV shows right. um, that, that play on the, the YouTube channel and on the, the Yeah, this is the programming. Show. These are all the sort of self-promotional programming that ended up on the network. There's my office again. <laughs> Fancy. I actually remember going to talk to you in there. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Okay, here we go. The back to the control. They keep going to that control. Okay, this is editing. Really nice editing base. I wish I had one of these at home. Um, yeah, they didn't script on equipment. They, they script on how they treated the staff. This is VFX. This is somebody who probably hasn't slept in weeks. <laughs> And now we're, okay, this is music. We'll get a little picture of music. They got a couple of guys. We have the Asian Justin Bieber. Bieber. <laughs> What's his name? I used to uh, call Ryan. him. Ryan. Ryan. I used to call him the Asian Justin Bieber. I mean, really talented kid. I mean, that kid was like, he could have been like, like making top 40 records. Instead, he's like trapped doing this crap. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Okay, there's the main mix with their pro mixer. Carrie. Carrie. Yeah. Carrie. Yeah. So he was like you. He was a hired professional. Yeah, nobody's like me, though. But no, actually, I'll tell you how Carrie came in. Carrie was a friend of the mixer at Gold, uh, Tim Boyle, who uh, mm -hmm. unfortunately passed away in 2019. But Carrie, originally, his initial contact with Scientology was the industry of death museum. 
because he mm -hmm. was he was a student at the I think it's called the American Recording Institute. It's within a couple of blocks of where. Oh I'm yeah, at. it's right there, Musicians yeah. Institute. Well, not there's the Musicians Institute, and then right near that is the Recording Institute. Oh. It's like it's like a separate school, very similar. Maybe they have the same owners. I don't know, but uh, so the Recording Institute would send students. Students needed to go see uh, installations of uh, like audio, like like installed audio systems like in exhibitions or theaters they needed to go see these as an assignment and because they were so close to the industry of death museum and because we had so many really interesting audio uh systems installed in there the school used to send their students to the industry of death museum so because uh, i remember talking to gary about that he's like yeah that's the first time i ever found out about you guys so yeah, this is a pretty amazing studio per square foot this is one of the best studios in all of los angeles it's just not very big, but it is really a good studio. And this guy is an extremely uh, talented mixer. Like he could be working anywhere. I don't know why he's working there. He gets a steady check, and he gets you know sent to England and all kinds and of. And it's a it's a point they'll pull, they'll pull pull up these graphics. You know, like the lower thirds and the the title bug and stuff. Right, for, right. For the ne there's there's never anyone's name used. No, ever. And that's because one, you don't want to give credit to anyone because all the credit goes to David Miscavige and L. Ron Hubbard and Scientology itself, right? Right. Yeah, no names. Two, if you turn around and then you're like, you, you're, if they say Mitch Brisker and then you turn around and have a YouTube channel and say unfavorable things or speak out, or you turn out to be like super gay or something else horrible. Right. Um, that could reflect badly on them. So it's very much no one's names are used right and they and on one of the one of the ever. reasons they say internally is they don't want those people targeted by sps hmm. but that in and of itself is is an admission no. that things are just screwy no it's so you don't reflect yeah no i know but them. but but the short story about it is because we don't want these people targeted by sps that's what i was told yeah. Also, because in a lot of the videos, like remember, Rachel, a lot of the videos you did that would be done, you know, they would be done in some foreign country or they would be done mm -hmm. with police or whatever. They didn't want to use their names because they didn't want SPs putting pressure on whoever they worked for, you know, like. Which yeah, is that's, that's true. That's true. OK, so this is uh, audio, audio recording for voiceover and so forth. Yeah, so this is, let me so see. Can... They are recording lectures in yeah, uh, uh, and, foreign, foreign languages. Yeah, and voiceovers for like this video was recorded in one of those booths. Mm -hmm. Now, check this out. This is a radio. Nobody does radio anymore, but this is a radio studio. And they don't have, they're not using it as far as I know. That's actually the guy sitting there being interviewed on the radio is a gaffer. He's a shoe team lighting guy. Yeah, exactly. And and but they, they put a costume shirt on. <laughs> yeah, and they could use this for a podcast, which like this is an amazing. Yes. I mean, yeah. these are like for I think these are like fourteen hundred dollar electric voice mics. I mean, this place is a lot of the stuff's not being used. It was just none of a this is being used. Ton of money this, was donated. There was this specific has never been donation, used. Uh, yeah. donation donating campaign that was done that was um, targeting millions and millions of dollars and. Right. A, a lot of the equipment is just not ever used. Yeah, here they are uh, faking the recording, faking a radio broadcast. Yeah, that's another staff member pretending to be uh, a guest. Yeah, here, here's what they have to say about radio. Uh, <laughs> I don't hear it. You can hear I don't hear it. G I don't know if people, if other people do, but I don't hear it. Oh, that's not a uh, silent. That's not a volunteer minister. That's another Seward member pretending oh, okay. to be a volunteer minister coming on a radio show. Okay, so you're not getting the volume through there. I did not. I did not hear it. I don't know if okay, you can no, ask no, in the chat. Yeah, don't worry about it. It's not. Uh, I don't know why the volume is not coming through. It's bizarre. Uh, okay. So part of this thing, it does prove that a lot of money was spent. Right. Yeah. True. But, yeah. True. True. Um, and it's true. A lot of money was spent. Oh yeah. There's a TV, it. there's a TV show where we have a Seward member from S and P pretending to be a volunteer minister talking right. about 
going out and helping people on a set that's never right. Used. And, and and of course they picked a girl who doesn't look like a typical white girl, so they she could come in and be from like Mexico or wherever she was from. I'm sure there was some thought process there. Yeah, I don't know. Talking don't about know. the events, the events are put together there. Like you said, that is, that is moved from gold to uh, S&P and the right, right, right. Right. events are put together right. at, at that location. Now, what the hell is this? Is this editing? What is this? Oh, this is That's now the Jimmy name. Lee. That's Jimmy Lee, who's a hired professional who does the events. Right. Uh, when they happen, he is the technical director of events usually. Right. So he's the guy that comes in and sits in the truck. Yeah. And says, ready, ready, you know, a lot of times he'll be the, the person saying ready camera one, take camera one. That some used to be Francois, but with him doing the actual cutting and right now a, a lot of times Jimmy Lee is, a, he's not a Scientologist. He's an outside professional. Right. This is one of the promos that I, for, I failed. I didn't cut out. I missed it. But notice how it's exactly like the film you were just, the documentary you were just watching. Like, yeah. there's no difference between all of a sudden there's a promo and then they go back to the to the thing. So uh, let me just scoot forward here. A lot of pretty pictures. Oh, yeah. No, there's no shortage of pretty pictures. Okay, so here we go. That was our job. Okay, and don't forget, guys, if you have a question, because we're getting near the end of this, please put question uh, in the chat so we can find them easily. I think it's just a lot of pretty pictures now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay, hold on one second. I want to do something here. Da-da-da-da. Uh, da, da. Hey, uh, let's hear it for your um, your internet hasn't crapped out in a while. Yeah. Let me just try this. I'm going to see if I can get this. Can you hear it now? Yeah. Okay, let me just scan to Including the end. PMC's largest BB now you can hear XBD. it, right? So I really do. Yeah, I'm going to have to remember that in the future. Board. Rounded out with it's one of the things I don't like about streaming. Recordings truer to okay, good. So let's while just, adding a warmer, richer let's tone go to the down sound. a little, a little more. We went through radio. We'll just scrub back through this. And across the European continent. Oh yeah. So this is about Around deploying the... video. Go ahead. Why don't you tell us about this, Richard? You know about this. This is how they were going to deploy video in coordination with all the CLO offices. Uh, You'd have to play more up. of it. Yeah, I don't even remember on. this section. Let me, let me just back up. Curiosity. It's like, what actually is Scientology? People look through windows, they pop their head in. I had seen churches everywhere. I'm like, I've seen this building. Before. Oh, this is a promo for, for the, the network. Totally different than what I thought it was going to be was like what is that tell me more and then i'm like tell me more and it was so easy to get all the answers oh my god you just walk right in and that's all it takes <laughs> i'm starting to feel guilty playing this because it's such propaganda mm -hmm. to the curious okay, the okay. I, I, I thought i got the ads out of okay. miles away the last component of this end-to-end -end design is final transmission this is Master Control, where the Scientology network goes live to air. Yeah, but all of this footage that they're showing up there is like old existing footage. Well, yeah, so then these shows are put together. This is what's playing it to direct TV. Right, exactly. There is a direct TV station and that and that was you that was the deal that you said 
Meaning, you had conversa many conversations about where a $10 million dollar deal was done, and that's right. why there was a lot of flip this out happening. Internet, you oh my God, oh my God, we've got to launch, we've got to launch the station, we've got to right. launch the station, we've got to launch the station. TV. And, and the we had to have enough content to stream Apple, on this Android station because they couldn't take the, the videos that were made for the events and play and them on the station no. because you can control who can see an event. Right. But if it's on the station, which is a direct TV station, so if you have direct TV in your home, you can see this. Um, it has to be way more controlled information and it has to be repackaged for it to be safe to, to, to go out to the, the general public, yeah, exactly. anybody could go see it. Right. Exactly. So that had to be rehoused and these shows were come up with, come up with and created. And we were filming pilot episodes and then getting those approved and then, and then filming episodes about, about different things that could, that could be filling up this station. Um, right. And then it was uh, thousands and thousands of dollars were being paid every month because we had already reserved the station. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It was being paid for. Yeah, and I that was that. a big like you know we're paying for this. We're paying yeah. so much money. We like this money's just being wasted, and 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 it's been donated. Right. So um, right. We gotta put the launch to this station, and that was right. like the, like a justification for the for the facility even existing because the station was supposed to make Scientology and the um, and the outreach campaigns and the social betterment and the social good stuff that was happening was supposed to make it all a household name. It was supposed to like take off like wildfire and everybody was going to watch it. Right. Um, right. And I, uh, I don't think that's what happened. No, <laughs> no, I don't think so. Yeah. It did get very good reviews. It's never been done in the history of television. We are an international. I don't know about we don't that. Have what is just in America? And we have them everywhere. Well, uh, so what did we do there? that's never been done in the history of television? Thousands of miles away. Hold on, here we go. The last component of this end-to-end -end design is final transmission. We'll just let this play. This is master control where the Scientology network goes live to air. Through the Grass Valley Playout server, technicians program the broadcast timetable, scheduling a month's worth of content, ensuring every show, commercial, and promo will broadcast automatically without interruption. Meanwhile, Hal feeds the live stream to another part of the lot. This is the internet oh, unit. Oh, do you see that? Where do you see that where it said goes global from Scientology? Did you see that where it said Freedom TV? I don't know. Yeah. It's really hard to go. Yeah, I mean, because it was back. supposed to be. The network goes live. Yeah, it, it, this whole station was supposed to be Freedom Through the TV. Grass and it Valley never happened. Server. Technicians program the broadcast. Yeah, sorry, it's just really hard to back up a little bit a on month's stream worth here, of but... content, ensuring every show, commercial, and promo will broadcast automatically without interruption. Meanwhile, Hal feeds the live stream to another part of the lot. There it is. This there is it the is. Oh, it didn't unit. stop. Anyway, you get the, the idea. Scientology the network Freedom goes TV global. never happened. From Scientology.tv and the Scientology TV apps for every Apple, Android, and Windows device, every show is available on... Yeah, but do you know... Do you know the device that the devices that people watch this type of TV on more than any of the uh, of the one of the services that they just mentioned, the devices they just mentioned, are video game consoles, Xboxes, and Playstations. More people watch mm. this type of content on those. And when I proposed that, they were like, they they were so confused, thinking that I was saying we should be broadcasting to gamers, that they were like, I literally got laughed out of the room. But anyways, because they're not on any of the video game devices, which is really tragic. I mean, I don't care, but, you know. I mean, ultimately, <laughs> it's not tragic. No, <laughs> it's probably really it's not. But I'm saying from the perspective, if you're trying but to reach from, You were trying to do your job. Listen, you were I, got, trying, yeah, you, I got, you were trying to, yeah. I got ridiculed for mentioning you might want to be on Xbox and PlayStation because there's more people watching TV on, on, on those devices than there is on an iPhone or any other device. And as it airs. They're the top two devices for watching content. And over 1,000 church websites, 
optimized for every major platform, taking Scientology's answers beyond the airwaves and out to the billions. The billions, yep. But reaching I don't think every billion I don't means think accommodating of every viewers. major language. No. The only problem, it's never been done in the history of television. We are an international church. We don't have churches just in America. We have them everywhere. So oh, they're talking was, about the multilingual the aspect. requirement to translate all of our know. content. In yeah, they're talking languages. about broadcasting the goal, all over the world. To live in stream languages. frame accurate subtitles in 17 languages yeah. simultaneously. Oh. So we had to devise a system. Well, yeah, except the it Mormons, would be interesting the to Mormons know do if... it in real time in 117 languages. Sorry. <laughs> oh, is that true? Yeah. So yeah. why why are how can they be saying that it's never been done in the history of television? Because they can. Because um, where yeah. we they actually can. made it so we could broadcast 17 languages, which had not been done before. Technicians program and read had not been done before Test by and me. Retest. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm 27 years old yeah. and I've and never so done it. Yeah, in oh, East great. Hollywood. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember this. The Scientology Network will make its debut tonight. Scientology TV launches today. Launching on Apple TV, Roku, is already trending all across social media. Yeah, they got all this buzz, Five remember? PM, March 12th, 2018. They got all the this Scientology buzz, Network and then the whole thing went to shit. Like, the reviews the and were so horrible. Around the world. In all 17 languages. It's a first in broadcast history. I don't know how you can say that if the Mormons are doing it, it in a hundred more languages around the world. than that. And this project uh, surpassed all other projects. There is not another studio on par with Scientology Media Productions. We're here. Wow, do you want to show us? And my my bank account can attest to that. That's, I mean, there. That's. Uh, I just think that that's that's what somebody says that they're being paid a lot of money. Yeah, exactly. Because so, there's some really. I mean, they don't have virtual production. They don't have any Unreal Engine. They don't. There's a lot of really crazy stuff I'm seeing in a lot of studios right here in the same city right. all the time that's pretty spectacular that right. doesn't exist there because well, I know all the lot all the equipment that exists there and right. so but I also don't know why you have to be like we're the best and the most I mean why yeah. do you need to be having a pissing contest with other studios why do you have to be having a pissing contest with another other religions right it's just not let's work together and and improve the world and all this money is being spent in all of this um, expenses going in and staff were not being cared for. So this whole thing happening, I was like, I'm done with this. This is not right. okay. I mean, right. there was staff, there was a huge uproar while all this stuff was being filmed and they're about getting ready to launch the channel after right. it had been, the st studio had been open, but they're trying to launch the channel where it was like, well, you can't feed your crew uh, when you're out on uh, um, filming. So if you're filming, it's right. going to take an hour or two hours to get back. You can't buy them Subway sandwiches. Right. It was a huge right. thing. And right. I was like, and they were asking staff to pay back. They were asking film crew to pay back money that had been spent on like in and out or Subway sandwiches for when they were out too far away to come back at, or they needed to film literally things that were planned, like occurring during the, the dinner times, they wanted them personally to pay back, you know, 300 bucks or a few hundred bucks um, each individually, even though that money had been approved, um, had been, had been uh, requested in writing and approved right. in writing for that very purpose. Right. Uh, someone, I think it probably was Will, your buddy came in afterwards and was like, Oh, this is embezzlement. This is, extravagant i was like i just don't feel that paying that b buying food for people is extravagant well you yeah. should just take food that exists well the, there's no kitchen there to to make ca to make cafeteria right. food bust in from somewhere right. so you want me to take a bunch of crew and take pork fried rice from the day before and store it in a <laughs> pa a 15 passenger van with no air conditioning in it all day and then feed that 
to people right. out of little like styrofoam cups because somebody's going to get sick. It's not hygienic. So yeah, the, if you're, if you're going to make this mandate, make this mandate, but come up with come up with some 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 plan and we'll we'll institute it and we'll ex execute it right but we have to feed people we have to give people water you know there was like oh pay back for the water that was purchased for when your crew yeah. was out in in LA and it was a, you're in the they were, they were way way out and it was 102 degrees and you had to buy them water cuz they were nowhere near they were filming something out nowhere near a right. place to get to get yeah, water right right you horrible. should be providing water and food i mean it's just a basic right so yeah then these is. individuals were making this some whole big thing and it was a big point for me because i was like i just don't i don't agree with that if you're i know yeah. how much you're spending per month right. to park your to park our digital butts on a right on a network right i'm trying to get 0.01 percent of that to go into paying for you know food and water for crew right yeah, it's for those, from, it's for those wrong. Of, yeah, totally. For those of you who aren't from, uh, for those of you who aren't from uh, California, uh, the In and Out. When Rachel says In and Out, that would be the inventor of uh, the drive-through restaurant, the world's first burger chain, and the best hamburgers in the world, and the cheapest. Yeah, yeah. it's like if you're gonna eat somewhere, yeah. it's cheaper. It's better quality, but it's cheaper than okay. like taking yeah. people to McDonald's, right? Yeah, we we love In and Out. Okay, so. We're almost done with the video. Let's just let it play out. Here's Chandra again. Chandra. To answer that global question of what is Scientology, you know, give people the ability to be able to find our humanitarian programs, and we're doing it. It really is all about purpose and having the purpose to help communities of all races, colors, creeds, and bring people together to build a better world. But not gays. No dice. Yes, as long as they're, they're not, as long yeah, as they're not exactly. dice. Broadcasting from a state-of-the-art yeah. digital production <laughs> studio at the heart of Hollywood is the Scientology Network. Powered by a humanitarian purpose to bring hope, solutions, and answers across every I love this. The last shot you're going to see. In a digital I swear age. they could have been arrested for voyeurism. This is how the Check Church of Scientology out. brings its message Check this to out. the world. That's some dude's house up in the what? Hollywood Hills. Oh, you know what? I think that's Yoshi's house. <laughs> oh, okay. So they I believe they got that from our um, shoot from Lo Yoshikawa, the the stone sculptor that I filmed. It looks oh, like okay. his house. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, at least they. And knew we the did guy. do a drone shot. Drone right. shots written. And then matched it to a to a uh, whatever. A worldview oh. VFX right. thing. Hey Weston, how are you? He has Quite, he has I, opinions. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so um there you go. I'm gonna let him out again. Weston, come on, you gotta go outside. Bye, Weston. Well, my pets are being very are being very, very quiet. Um, so well, Mitch is gone. He didn't give me a question. Let's talk about Mitch. Okay, good. So deep that... dark secrets of Mitch. Oh, it's okay, Mitch. We were just telling yeah, you about no, your go deep ahead. dark secrets. Just pre here, pretend I'll take myself. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Where'd she go? <laughs> Don't leave. Just kidding. Don't leave me alone with yeah, I have plenty of dark secrets. And, and yeah, you know, I should have brought up that uh, next time we're on, I'll bring up that ad that you and I shot the Scientology ad because that was really a lot of fun. The one that you operated on. Yeah, we can do that another time. Yeah, we should do it. I wanted, I wanted her, I wanted Rachel to be the director of photography, but because she, you know, quote unquote, she'd never done a, a TV ad before, which was just such BS that, that we had to hire a guy who was a good guy, and he wanted you to operate too. He he just wanted to hang out, but he, uh, yeah, he did, yeah. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and see what we got here. We're uh. Oh, look, we got a super chat from Mark. Thank you so much. Glad you guys. What, hold on. Let me put it up. Oh, yeah, put them up. Mark Blumford Good says, uh, he says, glad you guys are telling your stories. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for the super hey, chat. Hey, Mark. Rock. We love Mark. He's like the original gangster here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, we got any questions? Let me see. Uh, da, 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 da. 
Yeah, this is actually a, a good way to put it. Uh, F FYT five four three two one says Scientology Network incredible flash and excitement. Absolutely no substance. That is yeah. absolutely correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me see. What do we got here? Okay. Apostate Alex says, I endeavored to try in and up burger next time I visit the States. We don't have it here in the, in the UK. Well, listen, Alex, you got to come to Southern California. I mean, they're only in Southern California. They have a few stores in Las Vegas, Las Vegas. And I yeah. think maybe they opened one in Colorado. I heard. I think rumor. so. Yeah, but we yeah we will take you to In and Out, and oh, we know this. We know the secret menu. Yeah, they have they have a they have an off menu and uh, yeah an unpublished yeah. menu, which um, I'm still learning about. You know, they keep adding things to it. Mm. The the most recent one that I learned about is the Flying Dutchman. Oh, you know I don't that? know that one. Yeah, that's the I learned that from one of my kids. Flying Dutchman is there's just nothing. There's no. It's just a. It's every, It's like the most the most complicated burger you can imagine without a bun so it's like like there's it's like a ghost bun right so <laughs> oh here's a good question somebody wants to know uh fyt54321 wants to know is Morcabian one of the supporting languages <laughs> i wouldn't be surprised but the thing about the Morcabians, is you have to understand that they're a very advanced society and uh, they actually are able to in real time translate any language into Markabian. So they don't really, they don't need it. Uh, so there's another reaction from our biggest fan today, FYT54321. This is a lot of fun. Please keep doing your insider reaction, the videos to Scientology TV content. Yeah, we're going to definitely do some more. There's definitely some more of this stuff coming. Oh, wait a minute. This Is this possible? Michelle? Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Also good. in NorCal, 100%. Right. Yeah. You can eat in and out your whole drive on the five. Right, all the way up. You can, just, you can <laughs> stop, yeah. And the thing about it is they actually have their own potato farms in Idaho where they grow their own potatoes. Now we're doing in and out plug-in. Yeah, they actually, you, you, if you look back when they're making it, they put a whole potato in this press and then they go and cut the potatoes right yeah. there. Everything's so it's not frozen. Fresh. Yeah, they, ha they actually have these special five-star butchers who curate the meat. It's a combination of various different kinds of cuts of beef. So they, yeah, yeah, it's like the, they're the best burgers in the world. Like, we don't even get into arguments with people because we don't have to argue about whether White Castle or In and Out is better. I mean, it's just fun. <laughs> and it's really why I left. Uh, we couldn't buy the crew In and Out, so yeah. I was like, "That's it, I'm done." Yeah. Okay. Here's a question. This is from same again from FYT54321. Thank you again for all of the intellectual challenges you're giving us today. Question, what is the typical staffing level headcount at SMP? And what are they all doing every day? How much new content is always in progress? Surely not much. So it's, you know, things keep changing around and there was a big upset that occurred, which was like to keep it safer because it did become David Miscavige's uh, church and his location, his base to work out of that um, clamps down on security a lot. So there was an upset that happened um, in like uh, 20, 2019 um, where it was like, if, if you were married, if someone was uh, at S and P and had a spouse was married to someone at a different organization, then they couldn't necessarily be there. And so it, it fluctuates around 200, maybe 300 staff. And um, one, there's an incredible amount of busy work that can be created. And, you know, like there's an entire team of individuals to police people and, you know, to, to get people studying and to like right, inspect right. things. And to, then there's cleaning. There's like meticulous cleaning continuously. Right, because the crew, hold on, hold on, because the crew they're the ones that are responsible for cleaning the interior of the but there's, studios. There's also cleaning crew. Oh, yeah, that's true. It's that's both. True. Yes. Right, um, right, right, right. But uh, the, the, the thing is that the, with the international events being done there and uh, the uh, magazines being put together there, all that's the junk mail that you get, as you can imagine, if you're on the mailing list, it takes, it takes a lot of work and a number of people to generate that level of junk mail. So all those photographs, 
get done and the and come in and there's there's this footage coming in from around the world of different things and people being run and then oh that was that video was all wrong and there's something wrong with it um you know one time a whole bunch of videos had to be reshot in an emergency because the word came down after they submitted the uh, uh, event came down from david miscavige we can't just show a bunch of poor black people in africa that was actually a reject there was too many poor starving children in Africa videos right, right. Uh, be, fe being featured. So we need to show some upstat people. Um, I was, I, I, that sticks with me. Cause I was like, are you kidding me? Like that's <laughs> racist. Like yeah. what? I oh, don't oh. feel that way. I'm like, <laughs> what, right. you know? And it was like, Oh, we got to go now shoot, shoot more. So there's, there's, they'll print out thousands and thousands and thousands of individual frames from every shot that was ever done right in and, that then, city. And, and, and then and then what lay they, them all out and tape them together where do, but where do they lay them out in the stages the sound in stages. the studios and what have they used that the were with, with for that or presentations of you know carpet samples for, right that's all they use it for um it, it's uh so that takes a lot of people and when you have to do things and redo things then you've got people who are missing because they're 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 it's their time to be a piece of shit and they're like uh not on post and and whatever so that stuff has to be done and it's you know uh convoluted and meticulous and time consuming way and then you know you've 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 got um that that can keep that many people busy yeah, absolutely. And as you mentioned the other day, which I thought was really an incredible point, that the HCO department, their statistic is the number of situations that they've handled. Situations so, found and handled. Right, exactly. So you, they're certainly not going to be downstaffed. So if if some if everybody's just somehow doing their jobs and being good, you got to go you got to go find something that's wrong. You got to make make something to be to be to be wrong. Exactly. And if, you, and if you're if you're an individual that likes to control uh, control people and have them under your thumb and, and, um, have this sort of crazy level of control, then you're, you're going to need to push someone under their thumb if they're too independent. Yeah, exactly. It's okay. Just a, just a quick in and out update. There are in and outs in Colorado, Utah, Arizona, Nevada, and Denver, go. Denver Stevo says a uh, half a dozen in and outs in Colorado. Wow. It's Nevada. growing. It's yeah. This growing. is great. It's a, it's a privately owned company. It's owned by one family and they don't want to grow that big. Uh, it's a very interesting story in and of its own. We're not going to get into it. Right. Uh, okay. Amy Shu says, El Cid was a set for Ricky Ricardo's Roomba Club, and I love Lucy's show. I took my parents there when they came to visit me in Silver Lake in the early 90s. That's awesome That's that, so you cool. lived, that you lived in Silver Lake in the early 90s. You were way ahead of her time. Okay. This, said, this says, Rachel, how did Rachel justify her lack of feelings towards men? Uh, well, she was a lesbian. It doesn't need to be justified. She's gay. How do you, what do you mean? I think they mean in the C work. Like, how did you, did you have to speak to, I think that's what they mean. Uh, you, you get what I mean? No. Tell me what you think <laughs> the question means. Because <laughs> well, I, I feel like it could mean a bunch of different things. Like, how did yeah. I explain it? Yeah, okay. Here's, yeah, here's or how to I think. My, to myself? Like, no, 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 no. Because if they were asking that, I wouldn't let you answer it. But because that's just a stupid question. In other words, you never had like I. They're talking about your sexual identity in the Sea Org. That's yeah. what I'm sure well, it means. Well, there was a huge chunk of time where I was not supposed to like anyone and have any uh, actions or feelings of any kind towards anyone. Right. Uh, because we were all qualified to go work at int level, which means you're right. qualified to work for David Miscavige and like right. on his lines or in his radar at the same place that right. he sets foot. Right. So that was a huge chunk of time. And I was kind of, okay, kind of okay with that. I think because um, I had had so much trouble trying to figure it out for myself. I was kind of like happy to um, be very close with um, the people that I was close with. And I had a very close friendship with a woman um, and it just, couldn't be sexual. Right. So right, I was, sure. I was okay with that. Um, probably happier with that. Um, and then after many, many, many years, I was lonely. I was like, this sucks. I don't want to be like alone for my whole life. And 
there was so much going on. Right, right. I just, and I, and I had a history of SA from, from before. So there can be like a, now I wanted to get, get away from doing anything physically um, with anyone. And I just had not figured it out. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. And I, I kind of parked it and kept myself so busy. I didn't have to deal with it. Then no, I, I got into a situation where now I'm in a situation where someone, there's a guy and he's expecting something physical. Right. And I was like, oh, like gearing myself up. Like, yeah, this is going to, this, this is going to be good. Like I really tried, I gave it the old college try. Like really was like, I'm, I tried to be straight. Right. And I just didn't, I didn't understand what was going on. So then I, I tried and it didn't work. So then I just got myself out of situations where it could happen. Right. I was right. in, busy and important or, or there, I was traveling. I would get, get out and try. I just got away from it and avoided it and got myself out of it as much as possible. And then I was like, like looking at myself and in introspection, I was like, well, this is stupid. Like I'm, I, I, I'm, I, I th this doesn't make any sense. Right. But you're not supposed to watch anything LGBTQ. You're not supposed to watch TV shows. You're not supposed right. to be listening to podcasts or seeing films or like anything. So there, there's just, let's keep you away from that community. But I was like, I'm just going to connect to myself with this community and the outside world. I'm going to look at stuff and I'm going to listen to people. And, and then I was like, Oh, duh. Yeah. Hello. Like well, I'm totally gay. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, come on, you, know, right? you, you know, Rachel, I, I also think it's worth mentioning that Scientology is an incredibly sex negative organization. So it's not like, it's not like, you know, um, it's not like, you know, Paula brought up the, the or whoever it was, I'm sorry, who said, oh, it was Rachel who said to you this thing about how did you justify it? Because it wasn't like, normally you might be in a situation where you're talking about, oh, I really like this guy or gee, you know, I wonder, you know, those kinds of conversations. You're just never going to have those in the, in the sea or gay or not gay because it's so sort of sex negative and gay is and, 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 and sex is kind of off everybody's radar. At least that yeah. was my experience. So it wasn't that big a deal. Uh, but it was, yeah, anyway. So Rachel says, uh, so glad you got out and can be your true self. The struggle must have been hard. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's not It's not fun. Um, it's part of the reason why I think it's important to speak out. Like if someone, if right. someone is in any situation where they're, uh, you know, feeling these kinds of things or not being supported um, in being who they are. Like it just, it doesn't turn out well if you don't just go, right. you know, find out for yourself who you are and you're the only one who can figure that out. Nobody can figure it out for you. Other right. people might try to figure it out for you, but it doesn't work. And it leads to, you know, depression and, you know, you hurt, you hurt yourself, you hurt other people. It can, it, it statistically leads to, leads to a lot of suicidality yeah. and um, just, yeah. it's all bad. Right. So yeah. just, uh, you know, it's yeah. worth it to come out the other side, even though that you might have to go tell, tell some people things and be worried about how they're going to react. You, you know, it is, it is worth it. Um, right. There really is no other solution. Nothing else is going to solve it. Right. Right. Well, okay. So I think we're, uh, we just hit two hours. So I think we should think about bringing this to a controlled landing. I, I mean, I, once we get Let's started. crash uh, land. Can we crash land? Yeah, we can. Ready? Here I go. I'm ending the stream now. No. Um, yeah. It's just a thing that I say, you know, everybody's got their buzzword. My, their catchphrase is mine is we're going to bring this thing to a controlled landing. Usually I say that when things are a disaster, like when we're shooting and I say, okay, we got to bring this thing to a controlled landing. Like, like everybody like get your shit together again. So we need to, we're going to, we're going to bring this to some kind of a landing. Is there anything that you want to add to all this? I mean, this was a lot of fun. Uh, once we get started, I find it really hard to stop to just end it because we could just go on forever. But is there anything you want to add to our little, our little tour of the, uh, the cult leaders secret lair? I mean, I don't think so. I mean, yeah. I think it's been pretty summed, summed up in it. It's, it's very flashy. And, yeah, you know, it's, yeah. it's, uh, you know, there's all kinds of stories that come up, but I can't go off into everything. You know? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I just really, I just really think what should matter is people right. and human beings. Right. <laughs> um, exactly. Yeah. They're not about making the world a kinder place. That's a fact. 
They're not about reducing mm -hmm. harm in the world. So anyway, I want to thank everybody for watching and um, hopefully we'll see you soon. I know we'll be back soon. So see you later, Rachel. Thanks for joining me and we'll see you guys later. Bye, Mitch. Bye. <laughs> Oh! Oh!